Hello everybody, welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about some blood tests that I recently had done and just talk you through the findings from those blood tests. Now, obviously I do have my glasses on and I look a little bit like a professor today, but I must say I'm definitely no expert when it comes to blood tests. So what I'm gonna talk about, you know, I basically kind of researched myself and it's much of what I've just read from the write-up that I've had from these blood tests. So the company I went to for my blood tests was a company called Randox Health. So if you're from the UK and you know, particularly if you travel around London, you may well have seen all their marketing materials spread across billboards um, on the underground. The reason I paid for my blood test results was because the NHS blood tests I've been getting, um, although thorough in a way, weren't quite as thorough as I wanted them to be. So I wanted something a little bit um, easier to digest and something I could perhaps um, do for the rest of my life, to monitor for the rest of my life. And that's where uh, this Randox, Randox Health Everyman test comes in. So it was the Everyman test that I paid for. I paid £265 and that was with a discount code. And what you get done is you get 100, I think it was over 150 markers measured um, through your bloods. You have a urine analysis, so they measure some things there. And you also get like a body composition analysis done as well. And for that, that payment, I get a set of results. And then in six months time, I get to repeat all the tests and get another set of results so I can compare them. And yeah, you know, I enjoy that. I love a bit of data, you know, pretty cool guy like that. So just to talk you through the, the process, I booked an appointment at one of the clinics in London. There's a few different clinics around the country. I went there on the morning in a fasted state and had my blood taken, so a few vials of blood, I provided a urine sample, and then I stood on a body composition analyzer and then that measured things like my weight, my body fat percentage, a few days after going to that appointment, I got my results online. So my online account um, was available to view all those results. And then a couple of weeks after that first appointment, I also received a couple of booklets, uh, one of the key findings and one of, one of my results. So that's over 30 pages long through the post and these nice booklets. And what they do is they kind of have a traffic like list system. So they put your results you know, either in a, in a green zone, amber zone, or a red zone. And they, they also separate all the results out into um, 19 different categories, categories that include heart health, uh, nutritional health, kidney health, liver health. So you can kind of have a look at your, the different systems in your body to see if anything's out, if anything in particular. So yeah, I found the way they present their results is really, really easy to read. Um, not like an NHS result where it's just a load of numbers on the screen and it's a little bit confusing. So let's have a quick look at some of the results. Let's start with the body analysis test because there's something you know I want to share with you here that I'm really quite proud of. <laughs> um, no, I'm just being a bit silly there, really, to be honest. But no, apparently my body fat percentage is 17%, which is fine. You know, pretty pretty bang average, or you know, desirable is 11 to 22%. So yeah, my visceral fat rating is five. So that's a measurement of the fat around my organs. So you don't want that to be high. Uh, that is right in the middle of the green zone. So yeah, happy with that as well. And here's the thing that I really, really enjoy um, is my met metabolic age is 27. So thank you very much. So let's have a quick look at my overall health status. So using this traffic light system, they kind of given you, give you a roundup of your results. And I have 92% of my results in the green zone, 1% in the amber zone, and then 7% in the red zone, so out of range. And Randox Health describes those results as they highlight them as numerous or significant abnormalities that require medical intervention and or further investigation. Now I will say, none of my results require medical attention really, um, just maybe a little bit of further investigation. So let's have a little look at the, my results of interest, so my amber results and my red results. So the amber result is my heart rate, so my resting pulse was 40 beats per minute. I'm not particularly worried about that. My heart rate has always been uh, really low. My neutrophil count and my white blood cell count are slightly on the low side. Now here in the Randox Health write-up, the reasons that they give for possible low white blood cell count and also neutrophil counts, things like uh, radiation. So I was having quite a lot of scans at the time. So I don't know, maybe the radiation from those scans had a little effect on the neutrophil count, possibly. If you have low vitamin B12 and low folic acid, that can contribute to having low white blood cells and white, low neutrophils as well. Amongst my nutritional health, you can find those results. They don't appear in my results of interest because they're actually green numbers. 
However, they are on the low side of normal. So maybe my vitamin B12 and my folic acid need to be raised a little bit and that could affect my white blood cells and my neutrophils positively. What I should say though is I compared these results with some NHS results uh, a month previously and my white blood cell count was actually normal in those tests. However, my folic acid in that test was low. So maybe this is a kind of, this is a result of a delayed reaction to having low folate earlier in the year. And as a result, I've got slightly low white blood cell count. Um, so maybe there's just a balancing that's kind of occurring there a little bit. So my heart health was the most interesting sec section actually for me to read and it comes up with a few red results. So my total cholesterol is high, my LDL cholesterol is high, my um, apolipoprotein C3 is high, and my apolipoprotein E is low. So I've already tried filming this section, but I did waffle somewhat. So a little bit of a change of scenery just while I talk about this bit. So my cholesterol being high sent me down a massive rabbit hole of research to try and figure out why that might be and what exactly that meant for me. So that research made me realize that a lot of the scientists have very different opinions when it comes to cholesterol, with some scientists even saying that high cholesterol is a good thing. So yeah, what do you do with that bit of information? Nice and confusing, right? So my overall cholesterol being high, slightly high, isn't worrying me massively. My LDL cholesterol, which is kind of widely thought of as bad cholesterol being high, concerns me a little bit more, but as I kind of went further into my research, I did find out about small LDL cholesterol and it's small LDL cholesterol that is thought of to be the main contributor to atherosclerosis, which is the buildup of, build of plaque in your arteries, which then can lead to kind of the formation of clots and you know, that can lead to heart attacks and strokes. So small, a high small LDL cholesterol reading is more worrying than a kind of LDL cholesterol reading, as far as I can tell. And uh, fortunately, the Randox Health results do contain a small LDL cholesterol reading, and mine is in the green zone. So that was quite um, comforting. I then started looking into apolipoproteins, and one of the scientists, sort of slash influencers and health experts that I'm, I kind of respect and listen to a lot on podcasts is Peter Atia. And he talks a lot about apolipoprotein B being a very important marker that we should be focused on when it comes to cardiac health. And he says keeping apo B low is the kind of one figure that we should be, be worried about in that regard. Because apo B is kind of like the wrapper for all the other cholesterols in our body. So a high apo B can be a sort of signal that you're in, in danger of, sort of future cardiac events. Now, fortunately, again, the Randox Health test does measure APOB and my APOB came out in the green zone. However, looking into it a bit further, it's in the green zone from a Randox Health point of view. However, from some other experts that I've listened to and read about, they suggest keeping your APOB below 80, whereas mine's sitting at 99. So it may be green in the Randox Health zones, but in other people's opinions, it's still a bit high. So I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on that. I'm not gonna obsess over it, but I definitely don't want that to go any higher. And yeah, I'm gonna see if I can make some changes to bring, bring that lower. So what am I gonna to do to keep that APOB figure a bit lower and also my just cholesterol numbers in general a, a bit, bit healthier? Well, one of the kind of generic pieces of advice is to, to keep your saturated fat intake low. So I'm just gonna be a little bit conscious of my saturated fat intake. Not that I eat a lot of it anyway, but you know, there are times that I could probably say no to, to butter on things, one, one little area. I'm also taking quite a high dose of omega-3 uh, fatty acids. The research behind omega-3s is pretty extensive and it's said to you know, have a lot of positive effects, one being keeping those cholesterol levels normal as well. So that's one thing I'm gonna be doing. I do also have a small theory that my cholesterol levels are a little bit out of whack due to the surgery that I've been through and the issues I've had with overproducing bile and stuff like that because cholesterol is used to make bile. So that relationship between cholesterol and bile and the fact that I've had bile issues since I've not had a gallbladder and had my liver surgery could also be sending those figures slightly 
out of the, the, the ranges that I want them to be in. But yeah, hopefully that was more concise than when I recorded it earlier. Anyway, back to me in, in my house. Now the other result that was in the red zone for me was C-peptide, which was a little, little bit on the low side. So C-peptide is released into the bloodstream during insulin production. Now a high C-peptide can be an indicator of insulin resistance, which can then be an indicator of diabetes. So having a low C-peptide on this occasion, I don't think is a particularly bad thing because I was in a fasted state. So being, being fasted can, can make that a uh, little bit low. So not worried about that. Um, so yeah, they are the, my most interesting results from my blood tests, I would say. And I was quite pleased that it was nothing majorly out of the ordinary. Um, just to go back one step, um, the heart health section, I did get a cardiovascular risk score and my score was 2% and below 10 is desirable. So despite having those slightly squif uh, squiffy, that's an interesting word I've chosen to use there, uh, cholesterol results, uh, my cardiovascular risk score was, was um, very good. So as I say, it's gonna be interesting to look back on these results, compare them to the, my results um, from six months time, or it's gonna be a bit less than six months now for me, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be, gonna be an interesting one. My urine analysis, just looking through the booklet here, all very normal. So it measures your nitrates, ketones, glucose in your urine, bilirubin, um, and the pH or pro is there any protein in the urine? So all of these were normal or negative results. Oh yeah, let me talk quickly, very quickly about the liver health as well. Obviously I had over 70% of my liver removed in 2021 and all my liver numbers are in the green. So I was pleased to see that. Some of them are, are edging towards red zones, but again, I'm not gonna obsess over results that are still considered normal. So the changes I'm making to my life are, as I've said, just being, just being conscious of that saturated fat intake. I'm gonna be consistently taking omega-3 and I've also started taking a multivitamin and maybe that'll help bring up my folic acid, my vitamin B12. One of the reasons I've started on that multivitamin is because of the fact that I'm now back on the landreotide medication. So that's gonna be another interesting thing comparing my results because one set of results I'm gonna be on no medication and one set I'm gonna be on my landreotide medication. Um, Lanreotide medication can affect the absorption of vitamins and minerals, so that's going to be quite interesting for me. So yeah, hopefully this is something I'll be able to keep up, well, for, for um, forever really. I want to keep an eye on these health markers. Um, so yeah, in six months, every six months I'm going to get these tests done, obviously finance depending. And uh, yeah, just if anything goes out of whack, then I can make some small, small changes to my life. Um, so yeah, if you want to look into Randox Health, I will put a link down below. There will be a Discount code down below as well to save you a little bit of money. Um, I can recommend recommend the company. It was an easy experience. And as I say, the present, presentation of the results is really clear and obvious and it's quite nicely done. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, hit that subscribe button and the like button if you did like this video. Hopefully it was vaguely interesting and I'll catch you in another video.